Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. In today's video, we're gonna show you guys step-by-step -step how to configure storage spaces in Windows Server 2025. In today's video, we're gonna cover step-by-step -step how to configure storage spaces in Windows Server 2025. Before we get started with today's video, if you guys are interested in purchasing Windows Server, remote desktop licenses, Windows 10, Windows 11, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll have those links down below. So without further ado, let's jump in. All right, guys, so we are currently on my Windows 11 computer. I have my Windows Server 2025 domain controller set up in Hyper-V, which is the first point that I wanted to bring up. So I just wanted to talk through some requisites first, then we'll go into the hands-on tutorial. So if you are using Hyper-V like I am, uh, the first step for you will actually be to create virtual hard disks in Hyper-V, which is pretty straightforward. I'll give you kind of a rundown on that. So uh, you would basically right click and turn off your server if it's currently running. And then inside of settings, accessing the SCSI controller. If you don't see it, you can always go to your boot drive and then click down under controller and you'll be able to change it to SCSI. Uh, but from the SCSI controller, if you select hard drive and then add, and then here where it says virtual hard disk, you can click new go through the wizard and set it up. For mine, I just did simple like 10 gigabyte drives and I'm gonna use that for demonstration. So let's go ahead and jump onto the server. Okay, so once we're here inside of server manager, uh, again, we can always find that typically in our taskbar or the start menu, or we can always search for it. So once we're in server manager, we're looking for file and storage devices from the left-hand navigation pane. Uh, and once we do that, we can click down to storage pools. Note that we will need at least two or more physical or virtual hard disks that are not in use. Here we can see the two that I created on the right here. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and right click on the primordial and let's hit new storage pool. This will bring up the new storage pool wizard. I'll click next. And the first thing we'll want to do is give it a name. I'll make mine lab pool, just something simple there. Let's go ahead and click next. Oh, and we can also check our available disks also known as primordial. So we'll click next. Here we'll be checking at least two disks. So I'll check these two, we'll hit next. All right, and then finally, let's hit create. It's complete, so let's go ahead and close that down. And now we can simply right click on our lab pool if we want, and we can create a new virtual disk. So we see that we have free space of 18.5 gigabytes and a 19 gigabyte capacity. Uh, and this is gonna bring us to the new virtual disk wizard. Note that this is separate from the virtual disks that are created in Hyper-V. Our server is reading those as actual disks and then creating basically virtual disks within the server. A little bit confusing, but just note that those are separate and I'm essentially creating more virtual disks within the server uh, because the server just thinks that we're using, you know, regular hard disks. I'll click next here and we'll give this a name. I'm just gonna go ahead and type lab underscore V disk. And then the storage layout is very important. In closure awareness, I'll click next. This is where we're going to configure the layout and this will determine our redundancy. So for example, if I do a mirror, this is similar to RAID 1 or 10, this writes two copies for resilience. So this is gonna require at least two disks, which is why we added that to the requisites. And so mirror is basically redundancy. If one disk fails, the other one still contains your data and can be accessed. Simple would be striped across physical disks, maximizing capacity, increasing the throughput, but decreasing reliability. So this is gonna require at least one disk and does not protect you against a failure. And then the parity, this stores parity for redundancy, but with more disks. And for this, we would need at least three. For demo, we'll choose mirror and we'll click next. Okay, and then we can either do thin or fixed. Thin would be using the space from the storage pool as needed up to the volume size, uh, or fixed would just pre-allocate the size. So I'll go with thin for the demo. And then under the size, we're going to specify something smaller than the total pool, which we said was 18.5 gigs. Let's just do 15 gigabytes. And then we'll click next and let's click create. Okay, and then that's going to automatically bring up the new volume wizard, which we will go through next. So once we're here, let's go ahead and select the new virtual disk that we created, which we can find right here. We'll click next. For the volume size, we'll go ahead and assign a drive letter. I'll just do G for the example. I can either assign it to a drive letter or a folder, and we'll just go with the drive letter for now. File system, I'll keep that as NTFS. I'll title this lab volume. And then the allocation unit size, I'll leave that as default. Let's hit next here. Here we see our confirmation. Let's go ahead and create. 
All right, and then finally, let's hit close. So let's go ahead and see what we've accomplished. So again, from the storage pools, we're able to see the lab pool, and then we can see our virtual disk. And then let's go ahead and also make sure that we can see our volume. So if I click on to, so we should be seeing this in our file explorer at this point. So if I go to this PC, uh, here we can see lab volume G with 14.9 gigabytes of free space. And this volume that we created again has redundancy, meaning that there is a 14.9 gigabyte total capacity. Now that we see this here, we can right click on this and show properties. All right, and then this is going to confirm our size, which we said was 14.9 gigabytes. We have the label set as lab volume. If you want to verify the redundancy, that would be back in the storage pools in the server. In the server manager, so under the physical disks. So basically what we're looking for here is the redundancy column, or sorry, the layout column, and that is mirror. And so this is uh, confirming that we've configured this as a mirrored disk array, and this means that we have that redundancy. All right, and that is how you configure storage spaces in Windows Server 2025, which can be really handy as it helps to eliminate a need for expensive RAID systems or network attached storage. So we hope that you guys found this useful. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for today's video. If you have any questions about anything we covered, feel free to drop those in the comments below, and we'll get back with you as soon as we can. Again, if you're interested in purchasing genuine Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll have those links down below. As our channel continues to grow, we're constantly looking for new video topic ideas. If you have any ideas of your own, we'd love to know what those are. Most viewer commented video requests get made into actual videos on our channel. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.